Sudan, one of the most desired diving destinations in the Red Sea. Virtually the only possible way for Westerners to come to Sudan goes through Egypt. There's a weekly flight connection from Cairo to Port Sudan with no fixed timetable that gives an additional touch of uncertainty as well as the potential boredom of waiting at the airport. <laughs> Traveling in Sudan is a challenge for even the most hardcore backpackers. There's almost no tourist infrastructure and tourists are an extremely rare sight. President al-Bashir's regime limits tourist visas with expensive and complicated visa procedures. It is definitely not a destination for packaged tour groups. Nevertheless, Sudan is a genuinely exotic, unspoiled, and interesting country with a special sweet, bitter charm. People are open and kind. to respect Islamic customs and be especially careful and sensitive when taking pictures of women. Still, visitors will be impressed by the real beauty of Sudanese women, a mixture of Arabic and Central African looks spiced with a special touch of pride. Taking photos in general is restricted and often illegal. It's risky to take pictures of anything that the ever-present police may consider strategic or important for the country's defense. It's easy to run into problems because of an innocent tourist photo or video session. Why, why do we, why do we take pictures? Diving in Sudan is still in the early stages of development. All diving businesses are managed by Egyptian diving boats and yachts with unexpected luxury and comfort. Diving locations are first-class coral reefs and some of the world's most famous wrecks. The locations are uncrowded and divers can really enjoy their dives. However, strong currents, an open sea wind, and serious waves demand experienced divers. There are a lot of negative buoyancy entries, not so easy orientation, SMB deploying in the blue, and bipod pickups far away from the mothership. For safety reasons, all divers are equipped with special searching radio transmitters for easier rescue operations in the open sea. The coral reefs of the Sudanese Red Sea attracted famous underwater explorer Jacques Cousteau decades ago. The remains of his underwater lab Precontinent II are still visible in the lagoon of Shabrumi and provide an interesting journey into the past. Near the Shab Suadi Reef, you can find the fascinating wreck of the Blue Belt, a cargo ship that sank in 1977. The cargo was made up of Toyota cars and trucks, hence the other name of the Toyota Wreck. It's speculated that the crew were smuggling goods from Saudi Arabia at the time and were attempting to pass through a gap in the reef. Evidently, they got it wrong, hit the reef, and sank. The remains of cars are still scattered around the wreck.
The Umbria wreck is rumored to be one of the best dives in the world and is at least part of the reason why many people come to Sudan. It's the perfect wreck dive, big enough to give you plenty to explore. The Umbria was an Italian cargo ship. In 1940, British forces ordered it to surrender, but the Italians scuttled it rather than turn it over. The Umbria sank complete with its cargo, and should its bombs ever go off in the future, the ensuing tidal wave would engulf Port Sudan. Its cargo of fiat cars, wine bottles, tiles, and munitions are a source of lasting interest, and the wreck is festooned with coral and fish life. Besides these excellent dives, a diver can enjoy the beauty of the rich, colorful underwater life of many coral gardens. It's like swimming in an aquarium full of tropical fish. But all diving in the Red Sea also means the potential presence of sharks, the most famous and infamous inhabitants of this patch of water. Shark encounters are probably one of the most emotional and intense experiences for a diver. The coral reefs of the Red Sea are shark inhabited and are one of the best spots in the world to meet these magnificent predators. Shah Brumi, Angarosh and Sanganeb are some of the most known and desired shark watching destinations. Waiting for them in strong currents, or even in the blue, demands patience and a calm approach. A few decades ago, steel cages were used to safely watch sharks, and you can still see the remains of some of Cousteau's cages scattered around. After a few moments of waiting, you can feel and foresee their presence somewhere in the blue. A distant, undefined movement announces the arrival of the Kings of the Deep. The show can begin. And observing sharks dancing everywhere around you is certainly the highlight of a diving trip. All human fears and prejudices evaporate in a moment, and only respect and admiration remains. Sharks grow tired of their human guests 
and one by one start disappearing into the blue. The curtains close again, and it's time to ascend and go back to reality.